all right let's go to another example we have here so we have here a person deposited okay by the way this is also another park uh, item uh, that I got from one of the different sources okay online uh, so we have a person deposited 10,000 to a bank account and made no other withdrawals or deposits. So that means the $10,000 are intact each year. So and there was an interest added to the account. The table shows the account balance. So we see account balance. That means um, it is the total amount of money that you have in the bank that will already include um, the original amount and the interest okay so the account balance is denoted by f of x and that is uh, in dollars and x refers to the number of years after the person deposited the amount okay so this is how it looks so you have here x is the number of years after the deposit was made so zero actually is when the deposit was made then one means it's after one year the deposit was made two is the number of years after the deposit has was made and now we have the account balance okay so which is our f of x take note f of x is also our is actually our y so it started with ten thousand dollars then after a year because it earns interest now the total amount that's the account balance is now equal to ten thousand one hundred thirty which means this one hundred thirty dollars that is the interest and so this ten thousand one hundred thirty is the, composed of the original amount plus the interest okay so obviously the interest is one thousand three hundred one okay one hundred thirty thousand oh no one hundred thirty dollars okay so let's take a look at the increase so after one year so the increase of one year how much is the increase well definitely so that's one hundred thirty dollars right okay now let's go to the second year so two years after the deposit has made so in the min meaning an increase of another year the total amount or the account balance is now grown has now grown to $10,261.69 which means an increase of about how much this number minus 10130 that is about $131.69, okay? How did we know? We'll simply subtract these two values, right? So, if we are going to use the idea of rate of change, do we have a uniform rate of change? Do they have a uniform increase? So, during the first, after the first year, there was an increase of one year, an increase of $130. But after two years, so that's another additional one year, the increase was $131 in 69 years. So which means we, there is no, so the change, okay, the rate of change here is not, uniform or constant right so definitely this is not linear okay so because this is not linear then our other options would be could it be an exponential function or could it be other functions well let's take a look so because from our analysis it's not linear which the question is which function best represents the situation best represents the situation because from our analysis based on the rate of change okay meaning there is a uniform increase in the year so it increases by one year but 
if you get the ratio here for okay from the first year to this okay from once it started okay when once it was deposited then to after one year the increase was one dollar and thirty or rather one hundred thirty dollars then after another year the increase was one hundred thirty one dollars and sixty nine cents so we say that there is no uniform or constant rate of change so therefore it is not linear so from our analysis those linear functions will be out so this is a linear function this is a linear function we take them out and we're left with these two functions here and these are what exponential functions okay so the question there is which of the two functions here is the best all right um okay so what we're going to do is let's analyze now we know that if we have an exponential function f of x is a times b raised to the power x right where b here is our rate now when you say rate actually in this case i prefer to call it more of a factor a number that we use to compare it with the original amount so it's more of comparing okay comparing it to the original number or amount okay because i don't want you to get confused with rate of change because the rate of change here may not be what we're going to use in our b okay now and then this a here which is multiplied to this power b to the power x take note it's only b that's raised to the power x you do not include a a is our initial amount in this case it is how much you deposited okay that's the original amount so amount in this case it's the amount deposited and kept in the bank all right so our initial amount is ten thousand dollars so that's why we both have ten thousand dollars there okay but then we're both so now we're both left with these two numbers which one is actually our what i call this our value okay is it going to be less than one or greater than one so remember from our knowledge on increasing and decreasing function um we know that if the function is increasing right function is increasing that means the value here of f of x will be increasing so that's what we call increasing but if the values are decreasing in values then that's decreasing okay so when the value of f of x is increasing then remember our b must be is greater than one correct our b is greater than one but if the function is decreasing in values our b is less than one and of course greater than zero okay we cannot we're not taking negative values of b here okay so which do you think is the proper value of b well because the values of the function the ba about okay account the balances here are increasing then definitely we're going to pick this function wherein the factor at which we're multiplying 10,000 by repeatedly is going to be greater than one and so this is the answer okay now you might ask how did we get one point 
zero one three okay how do we get this factor okay how to get b how to get the the factor okay factor b now let us say if okay example if the function if the original function or yeah if the function is increasing meaning the values of f of x are getting bigger all right let us say for example the rate at which it is increasing is 13 no 1.3 percent okay so let's say there is a 1.3 percent interest okay okay so what does it mean that every year the um, your money will get a will grow by 1.3 will earn an interest of 1.3 so which means during the first year okay the original amount was 10,000 right 10k and then so that's equivalent to 100 percent then on the second year that 10,000 doesn't remain to be just 10,000 it will be added by what 1.3 percent of this amount okay what is 1.3 percent of 10,000 that is about $130. So all in all, all in all, your money now is about $1,000 or $10,130. And this $1,000 or $10,130, that is about 100, okay, that is going to be 100% plus 1.3 percent or that's equivalent to 101.3 percent so therefore the amount of your account balance after one year is 101.3 percent compared to your original balance okay and so this is your multiplying or this is the factor that you will multiply to your current balance so the following year the third year what okay the th amount for the third year say this one here is 101.3 percent of the amount that you have in this second year here after okay one year after you have deposited the amount so every year your current balance will be multiplied by 101.3 percent or in decimal that's 1.013 okay so this is the factor so that's how we get this all right so let's have an example let us say the interest is 2.04 percent all right so which means after a certain number of years the money that you will have will be the original amount which is 100 percent plus 2.04 percent that's about 102.04 percent and then in decimal that's going to be 1.0204 or 1.02 okay no percent sorry that's right okay now so that is for increasing what about if it is decreasing if the function is decreasing
so if it is decreasing then simply if it's decreasing by let's say 15 percent decreasing decrease all right so the original amount is 100 percent that's original amount we take 15 percent so the following for the next following year what will be left you take away 15 percent there so what will be left will just be 85 percent okay and 85 percent is 0 0.85 and this is the factor that you're going to multiply to your original amount or to your current amount so let us say that uh, the decrease is 1.3 percent decrease so therefore that will be 100 percent minus 1.3 percent that's about 98.7 percent in decibel that would be 0 0.98 or 0 0.987 so that is the factor that you're going to multiply to your initial amount so that's where the 0.987 came from all right okay to summarize um our if our function is does not have a uniform rate of change then obviously it's not going to be linear and if you think and then there is some kind of a uniform number multiplied here so more or less 130 and 131 are a little bit um, okay so let's compare the rate here okay so that would be about yeah so that's about 1.3 percent increase okay interest in this case all right so that's how we compare and so if you go back to our assignment let's say, um, let's say you have here the savings uh, account accumulates no interest but receives a deposit of eight hundred twenty five dollars per month do you think it's linear or exponential receive so how do we think of it so let's say originally so when t is zero you get say 10 let's say 100 dollars after one month you get um and call this a deposit of 825 so how much you get now that's 925 right after two months you get another 825 dollars so that would mean seven one thousand seven hundred fifty so after each month you get a, an increase of eight hundred twenty five dollars so is it linear or exponential it's going to be linear right because there is a uniform increase in the a rate in, increase in the amount added each month okay now a value of a house increases by 1.5 percent per year 1.5 percent per year so basically whatever is your initial amount is going to be multiplied by one point so the value of the house the following year is going to be 101.5 percent of the original okay so this is going to be exponential so i've given you two examples here and then well of course let's continue variables here um you have of course the variable would be time this is the number of months and then the other one is the um what it calls savings right savings those are the two variables so which is the independent it's the number of months the dependent is the amount of savings okay and then you can call it the s all right explicit formula so basically um 
because it's linear then you're going to use y equals mx plus b so because there is no specific initial amount then you can just call it any or you can just like um put uh make up your own number so let's say 50 times x and then you add um what do you call this is it 50 8 no let's say your initial amount is 50 and your because you want you add 800 sorry about that so let's say your initial amount that's going to be b is say 50 dollars and then you increase 850 each 825 each month so that's going to be 825x all right for um the second example the value of the house so again it's per year so this your independent variable is the number of years so that could be t and then your dependent variable variable is the value of the house we can call that v so we can say here v is going to be now because there's no initial value let's say it's 150,000, and because it increases by 1.5 percent so the factor is going to be one so 1.015 raised to the power t all right any question again 1.5 1.015 because it increases by 1.5 percent so you add 100 percent to 1.5 percent you will get uh, that's going to be now equivalent to 101.5 percent in decimal that's 1.015 all right that's how i get that factor all right so your homework will be to do this three remaining factors and complete the rest of this as um part of the paper because this is just simply a review of what we have done in class yesterday all right have a good evening